Hey everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. I wanted to break down for you guys the jobs report because everybody's saying it's very, very good. And man, there is just a black spot on this thing that I think you guys should be aware of. So let's hurry up and take a look here before we get started. Please, as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It supports the channel. Now, job growth zoomed in March as payrolls jumped by $303,000 and unemployment dropped to 3.8%. That's good news. And there are a few good things here we'll talk about very fast just to get out of the way because it is important that we recognize the good news here. Job creation in March easily topped expectations in a sign of continued acceleration for what has been a bustling and resilient labor market. This may not be the best news for inflation, but still, we're looking pretty good here. You guys might have seen the stock market actually tip up a little bit and then come roaring back down towards the middle of the day. Interesting to see how that's how it's reacting because it looks like everything's still in that prism of, of inflation. Next up, we have non-farm rural payrolls increased 303,000 for the month well above the dow jones estimate for a rise of 200,000 and higher than downwardly revised 270,000 gain in february so that's good news for everybody involved you can see we're still holding pretty steady we're not at the levels of 2022 but this was the post-covid kind of resurgence back into the the job market everybody was looking for jobs everybody was getting kicked off of unemployment <laughs> unemployment benefits now Year-over-year year percentage change in average hourly earnings. This has been coming down a lot. You guys are probably not getting as many raises as you once were, and that's because inflation isn't as high as it once was. So, you know, we're going to be keeping track of this as well. The fact that it's coming back down, this is actually good for inflation, which means nobody's getting raises. That means the prices don't have to come up. We have little pockets of, you know, inflation, like in California, with stuff like that. Overall, we're a little bit better off. Now, this is something I thought was pretty interesting here. A string of positive gains has kept unemployment below 4% since January 2022, though there have been some signs of cracks. For instance, the level of household unemployment has grown modestly over the past year, while temporary employment has declined sharply. So, again, not a lot of temp workers, a lot more full-time workers. There's not a lot of temp jobs out there. Typically, temp jobs means there's so much business, so many things are happening, that you need to temporarily get more people to help you out. Okay? That's not good. Not terrible, but, you know... Typically, you want to be able to find a short-term income if you just need to make some extra money. This is where things start to get really, really rough. Gains tilted heavily to part-time workers in the household survey. Full-time workers fell by six thousand, while part-time part, while part-time uh, timer, excuse me, increased by six hundred and ninety-one thousand. Here, multiple job holders rose by two hundred seventeen thousand to five point two percent of total employment level. That is insane. So people are having a hard time finding full-time jobs because they're losing them. They are losing. There's actually a net loss of full-time jobs. So many people are getting part-time jobs. And on top of that, they're having to find multiple part-time jobs to go into a single uh, form of income for people. This is the bad news, I think, is where, you know, we want to feel like things are good. We, I know we really, really do. But like when we have full-time jobs going down and part-time jobs coming up, as well as people having to find two or more, or two or more jobs... That's not the type of economy we really want to see. So there are definitely some cracks in here. If you guys have a job, do everything you can to keep that job unless you guys are some, uh, you guys have a sought after <laughs> type of niche in your industry. Because this to me feels like there's definitely some cracks. People are being forced to work at jobs that are part-time. And those part-time jobs, they don't carry benefits. They're, they're not going to be as good for you long-term, of course. And I think that's where people are starting to feel like, oh, well, I have this high inflation right? Things, things cost a lot more money than they used to. I'm not getting paid a lot. And on top of that, I can't find a full-time job. I can only find part-time jobs. And those part-time jobs don't actually pay for any benefits. So that's going to be some of the things we see here today. As far as the overall market, everybody, Bitcoin's kind of going through its thing. Nice little move here over the past couple of hours. SPY though, coming back up a little bit after kind of a rocky day yesterday. The NASDAQ and the Dow Jones getting smacked today. They had a pop during the earnings, but again, once the news kind of settles in that this is kind of bad for inflation, boom, you saw how it came back down. Just keep an open eye on the market, everybody. Let me know you guys' thoughts. I was very surprised to see that the part-timers are really fueling this market. And it's not those people who are having full-time jobs. They're not having the best of times right now. It's the people that are looking for two or jobs or more. And even that seems crazy because you know if you're looking for two jobs at the same time, you're not, definitely not going to be uh, in the best financial situation, right? So thanks, everybody, for watching. And let me know if you have any questions.